Americans up and down the field, talent in every position, a lot of experience on both these teams, including at the faceoff dot. Petey LaSala and James Riley. The last time these two teams met two years ago, Riley was injured on the opening faceoff. LaSala wins it, and Virginia gets on the board first with Connor Schellenberger getting the back of the net. Petey brings the juice. Don't call him a Fogo. Face off, get off. One of his best attributes is he's instant offense after he wins the clamp. No one in the history of the sport has taken more draws than 23 for the Cavaliers. And look at the acceleration, the vision, and the finish by Schellenberger. Almost a replay of the last time you and I did a Virginia game two weeks ago against Notre Dame in Charlottesville. Schellenberger scored right off the opening faceoff. Here comes Petey again. Will it be a replay? Schellenberger takes that extra step inside, and he scores again! This is crazy, Connor. Connor Schellenberger has been nicked up all season with a lower body injury. People doubting his game. Turn on the tape when he's healthy. NCAA Tournament most outstanding player as a freshman in 2021. And look at the counter move. The first shot by Schellenberger was a catch and shoot. This time he plants his foot and gets the defense to bite one way. And it's the total counter. It's the opposite way he moved towards the ball from the first goal. That is a lacrosse player with tremendous IQ. This time he jumps the whistle a bit, face-off violation against Petey, so we'll get an opportunity to see Georgetown for the first time this afternoon, 6v6. And this is a potent Georgetown offense. Minnick is transferred in from Colgate. Where he had 133 points in his years there. Petey not afraid to shoot, shoots it wide. This face-off matchup, if you asked anyone three weeks ago, they'd be like, wow, this is going to be a crazy battle. But James Riley's been nicked up. He's had a hamstring injury the last few weeks. Petey LaSalle, who was in a boot earlier in the season, is as healthy as he's been. And was transferred in from Colgate. Where he had 133 points in his years there. Petey not afraid to shoot, shoots it wide. This face-off matchup, if you asked anyone three weeks ago, they'd be like, wow, this is going to be a crazy battle. But James Riley's been nicked up. He's had a hamstring injury the last few weeks. Petey LaSalle, who... Virginia. I say, I've said it before, I'll say it again, Clark. He just has the quickest hands of anybody I think I've seen in this game in a long time. Catch and it's shoot nuts. in a millisecond. It is nuts. And you think of the goal scorers who have come through Virginia. He broke up. Give him that. He could give them a wing dodger. Yep. A guy that's really played everywhere. Think about the six goals he scored last week against Yale. All, almost all of them in very different fashion. Four of them were left-handed. He's a righty. Do not blink watching this game. It is going to move extremely quickly, Kark. And there are going to be a million goals scored this afternoon here. There you have Petey LaSala. Stays on. Yeah, he faces off, but he stays on because of his ability to create offense. And when teams worry about him and shut him off, you could play five on five. Well, here he is now trying to dodge. Are you kidding me? And it scores! Doesn't even know the meaning of the term Fogo. This is a lacrosse player. You saw Riley lost his stick and immediately Petey said, I'm going to the rack. But that's a guy with the sixth sense, Cotter, to understand how the game flows offensively, right? The instincts. Doesn't have to be told what to do, when to cut, where to go. A little spin and face dodge. That is tremendous offense by Petey LaSalla. He beat a pole. He beat Wally Halpert. He was an incredible running back in high school. Out on Long Island, Lars Tiffany found him later in the recruiting process, and boy, oh boy, did he find a gem because his freshman year, he became the guy. Two goals in the national championship against Yale in 2019. He's been doing it ever since for Tiffany. Scored a school record 43 touchdowns as a running back at Rocky Point.
on Long Island. Squats the most of any player on the Virginia team. Now, now Cotter's starting to smile. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. New ones. Tell you what, Virginia has been able to get to Hanks, the goaltender for Georgetown. Five of six shooting in this first quarter. Riley looked like initially was going to win that faceoff. A much needed faceoff for Georgetown. Now he has it. Because of his ability to shoot on the run and his athleticism and speed down the alley. One gold with Team USA under 21 this last summer. Now we get a whistle. We'll get an illegal procedure on the faceoff. It's going to go against Georgetown. Fresh shot clock. New possession for the Wahoos. Thomas McConvey, number 12 in white. First time we've even... Little time on, on trying to instruct or to yeah. revisit their schemes. Beautiful job by Saladay, but it stays with Georgetown. Yeah, Lars says, we'll talk about something, and they'll say, like, oh, you mean like what we did against North Carolina Yeah, last they'll year? interrupt them midway. Uh, oh, yeah, that. Exactly. You remember yep. that. Okay, just do that. So you get to focus on other things, more on your opponent, less of your install, and... Those valuable minutes throughout the course of the week when you have the veteran. Bundy, they have options when they attack a defender and they watch the hips of the defender and based on where they're hedging, that's where they counter. Petey wins another face off. As Clark mentioned earlier, Riley has been banged up. Lower body injury over the last couple of weeks. He soldiered on last week like a warrior in the rain at Georgetown and beat Hinks. The advantage is back to seven goals. Petey wards off Riley there. Soliday was able to pick it up, got hammered. Petey picks up the ground ball. Simmons telling us what it was like to be a teammate of Jim Brown was... Amazing and just a lover of the game of lacrosse when you think about it. I love the quote he said about the game. Lacrosse is the greatest sport invented by mankind. I was always happy to be one of the players who respected it and loved it. Also one of the last, you know, you think about... Mm -hmm. Face off picked up by Chismar. Petey stays on. The extra pass hits off the crossbar. Do you see the awareness of the set? To within two. So it's yo yoing between a one goal and three goal deficit for Georgetown. Masala wins. No advantage. Back to Chismar. The little stutter step, too. Petey's like, it's like a, a cat and mouse game, right? So low to the ground. That low so center low. of gravity. What's Lars Tiffany going to do when Petey graduates, right? It's just like so many of these players on this team. He loses a lot from this team because he's had so many of these guys now for years. You throw in the COVID year, it's like five and six years for a lot of these players. Couple passes on that possession from four in blue. Two years ago, he actually, as a true freshman, led the nation in assists. He has one goal on the year, now 25 assists. That's what type of a player he is. Scrum at midfield. Loose ball violation, gonna go against loose ball penalty, rather, goes against Georgetown. You know, Hans Wittelsberger was the referee on that play, and I guess he was looking in the corner, he was thinking that the play was gonna be, was being put into play at the time, Kark. Well Griffin shots, you're seeing in this second quarter some confidence, right? You saw the one-on-one -on -one earlier from up top, this time from behind, and he's comfortable there, too. Lars Tiffany has toyed with him as an attackman in the offseason, the early stages of this spring as well. But the big question for Georgetown is, can full torque, he could spray it. Wiley. He may take a shot, can't get it off. Caster was able to dislodge the ball from a bang and down low. That's Suey with a nice ground ball. Take it away from Tucker. Here comes Connor in Virginia. IQ of Connor Schellenberger, who's been the story 
of this first half. Big face off. Petey, what a nice job to give his player an opportunity to pick up the ground ball, but he can't do it as, Bo as Bauer is unable to pick up the ground ball. So here's a great opportunity for Georgetown with 12.7 left to go. No timeouts left. Bundy's going to have to be offensive coordinator. You have nine goals. You're finding your spots. The biggest question is, can you handle this guy right here, Petey LaSala? He is so clutch in NCAA games in May. And Warren is going with Riley, who's banged up, who won that faceoff, and he wins it out front. He'll take a shot with his left and try to get Georgetown to even things up right in the first few seconds of the second half. It almost looked like when Riley won the faceoff, he didn't know which way to go. Correct. Right? He was like, am I going in the right direction? Oh, yeah, there's a goalie in an orange <laughs> helmet over there. Benekis is smart enough not to allow those two defenders to get into the body. He is beating them in space. Every time those guys try to wrap their arms around him and engulf him, he counters with space. And if you watch him, rarely are you seeing the defense making contact with him. It's been masterful in terms of how he's setting up his dodges. The Hoyas deliver the first blow in the second half. We are all tied at 10 apiece. Basically, keep his offense in the same set because of his versatility. If he goes behind, it gives Georgetown too much time to set up and slide, Cotter. Virginia retakes the lead, and Petey continues to own the battle at the faceoff dot. Sal subs off. Here comes Connor. Xander Dixon's got his man hung up. Solomon is playing the best lacrosse of his career in his final run. And he's such a hot shooter right now. He would not have taken that shot three weeks ago. But when you have 11 goals in the last two games, you have the green light to do it. Petey has the green light, wins another faceoff, carries the ball into the restraining box. He just has to beat Hicks, which he did. And Virginia now back on top. Riley battling at the dot, wins this faceoff. It is a punch, counter punch game right now. Within one goal for quite some time since the end of that first half. Scoring to slow down a little bit. It looked like we were going to be in the early 20s first five or six minutes of this game it was furious Bundy nothing there back up top to Tucker working on Sawstead Sawstead is just a Memorial Day weekend I would hit a low it used to be a yeah, real drought you, you just be coming down and like yeah, what's what next now? nothing what now well I'll tell you what now PLL all the way through September and looking forward to that new the new lifeblood Young talent coming in. On there, fooled us all. And now it's a three goal advantage. Final two minutes of this third quarter. Georgetown has taken every punch from Virginia this afternoon and they've countered. They've been able to hang tight. Now it's another one of those times. They need to deliver their own blow. Look at that. Riley's going to get called here, though. Riley absolutely leveled Mitch Whalen and he's going to get called. Now, was this high? Let's take a look at the replay. Or was this just a hard legal hit, Clark? 33, one minute, cross check, one minute. Okay, they're saying it's a cross check, so let's look at the stick and the hand placement. Warren has already lost the flat rim. Riley, 33, cross check. Yeah, he extended the arms. He's lucky he didn't get more, right? Because you can go to two three minutes depending on how excessive it is he gets the one minute standard that's clearly a cross check hands are separating gets some high in the neck area to know this offense essentially Cotter is is unguardable he's like the missing piece oftentimes because he can stretch it's like Steph Curry hitting threes and you have all these inside guys Petey won the clamp but pushed it too far forward, so Bowen was able to get possession for Joy. Was tied at 11, and Cavaliers four for their next five on Hinks and the Georgetown D hitting the back of the net. Battle for that faceoff. One by Virginia and Scott. Freeze his hands. 
Georgetown needed that not only as a team, but they needed number two to find the back of the net again, Clark. Don't you agree here early fourth quarter? Because he can heat up. And he's the guy who can make a difference in this three goal deficit. Got to get possession, though. And right now it's Virginia and Chismar. Schell Schellenberger. This is so dangerous. When Kevin Warren has lacrosse nightmares, that guy right there is at the center of all of them. 12 goals in two games against the Hoyas in quarterfinal action. Six in 2021. He's got a six pack today. And look how he just moves towards the middle of the field, gets the defender to bite, and then he's shooting at an ocean. A lot of inexperienced players say, okay, I'm at this spot right now. I have my hands free. I'm going to let it go. But Schellenberger with the patience and the ability to understand this game, almost in slow motion, he realizes where the gold and the money is. Back to a four-goal lead. Riley is able to win the face-off, get it to a teammate. Bowen initially couldn't find it. Donaldson is there, though, to pick up the change. You, you cut without the ball. With the ball, it's a smelly. All right. Duly noted. But that's just masterful off-ball offense, right? You pass and cut. But he hesitation before he cut right so they thought they were good like he passed took a couple this gone shows you his ability to spray it on the run that is a fine looking take gotta have it they get it from riley gotta go quickly minicus can do just that to matsui the attention he draws with the slide quick slide this is where if you're the PLL with a two-pointer, it's only a two-possession game. For Ken Warren, will be a leader. But I was talking about the prospects of next week for the Cavaliers. The winner of Hopkins, who they've faced earlier in the season. Beat him up big. We got something here.